As you turn into the book of Mark, I'm going to pray, all right? You can join with me if you get there, and let's go together. Father, we thank you for today. Lord, we thank you for this house. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to celebrate 28 years of, of ministry and of church together. And Lord, we give you the praise and the glory and the honor. Lord, we thank you for this house. We thank you for Pastors Jim and Pastor Deborah Cobre, who with their heart and with their faith, Lord, they sowed a seed into the Inland Empire when nobody else wanted to sow a seed. And God, we thank you that we are all the fruit of their labor today. And God, we ask that you would bless them in this season of their life. In Jesus' mighty name, Holy Spirit, speak to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hey, guys, look at you. You are some good-looking guys. All right, what's your name, my man? Tyler. Tyler and? Dylan. Dylan. Say hi to Tyler and Dylan, everybody. You know, at home, I have, uh, I have we, we always have change or something in our pockets, and it falls in between the couches and stuff like that. And I'm always wondering, like, where'd my change go? You know, and I see my little boy Bjorn, he's got a little savings thing, and he's shaking it around. He's like, finders keepers, losers weepers, right? And... And you know what? Our children's ministry, they've gathered together, they've put their change together, they've sold lemonade, they've done brownie sales, I mean, they've done all sorts of different fundraisers and jobs to work together to give into today's offering to see the multiplication in their life. And so our friends, what was it? It was Tyler and... Dylan, Tyler and Dylan are our ambassadors from our children's ministry here to present for the miracle offering today, a check for $1,134. Good job, guys. Good job. Give me five. All right. Dude, that was an awesome one. Right on, guys. All right, you can take that check back. Thank you. Give them a great big praise. So we're talking today about the miracle in multiplication. That's today what we're talking about, the miracle in multiplication. You see, or the miracle of multiplication, because we need to understand the principle of multiplication as God teaches us in, he teaches us in His Word. And today, as we conclude Freedom for Our Future, as we conclude this series, you know, the idea and the thought is that all of us, we've all been in areas of our lives where we find ourselves up against the mountain, up against some type of insurmountable opposition, whether it be financial, whether it be emotional, whether it be relational, whatever it might be. You might have children or grandchildren. Some area of your life, you look at that and you say, man, this is just a mountain I just don't feel like I could ever get over and I need to get through or go around that. And I'll tell you what, God has some miracles in store for His people. Did you know that God wants you to live blessed? Sometimes we walk around and I don't think we quite believe that, you know, and, and yes, there are, there are those, and there have been messages over the years that have, that have maybe taken that a little bit too far, but did you know that God wants you to live blessed in your life? I mean, Jesus says it like this. Jesus says, our Father who is in heaven, He says, when you ask for Him, a, a, a good father doesn't give their child a rock when they ask for bread, or a snake when they ask for a fish. Jesus says, God wants to give you the de desires of your heart according to His will. God wants you blessed, and He wants you to live a life of multiplication. And today we're going to talk about that in Mark the fourth chapter. Before we get into Mark the fourth chapter, I want to just share a story of a lady here. She works on our staff. Her name's Mary. And Mary, Mary was like you and me in, in, in many areas of our life. Mary was up against a mountain and there was no way to get around this mountain. But she trusted in God and she saw God's miracle in her life. And as we saw through Freedom for Our Future, we've had multiple testimonies, many testimonies of God coming through in miraculous ways. And Mary's story is exactly one of those stories. So why don't you check out the screen and listen to Mary's story and we'll come back and talk about the principle of multiplication. Several years ago, I was in debt up to the ceiling, way over the ceiling. I, it was hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. I owned a house I couldn't afford. Um, I, my motto used to be in those days, um, I can't afford to even live. I had student loan debts, I had this mortgage I couldn't afford, a couple of mortgages um, on the same house. Um, I had, um, let me see, a personal loan, a lot of credit cards. Um, I even went, many years ago, I went to a, a credit consumer place where they cut up all your credit cards, and they actually told me I was a lost cause. They said, um, we don't know how you're making ends meet. We don't know how you even keep in current on your bills. And it wasn't until I, and they even said, oh, this tithing here you're doing to your church, we think you should stop that, call them and mow their lawns or something. And when I was driving away, it dawned on me, I didn't realize it until I was leaving, that it dawned on me that um, I was current on my bills because I tithed. That was the key, and I wish I had remembered that while I was in, in there while they were telling me I was a lost cause. And I joined the Freedom for Our Future even in the debt I was in. And be, during that time, 
I paid it all off slowly but surely, and it was the Lord. It was a miraculous thing. The Lord helped. It wasn't logical for me to actually join the campaign, you know, just to focus on my tithing and just to pay off the debts. But you know what? I says, no, I'm going to do this. And I'm so glad I did. Mary's story, although hers is a financial story, I find is a lot like our lives in that there are things that it just seems like, I don't know, there's no, there's no logic in it. There's no sense behind it. There's no way to get beyond it or get past that. And that this is massive, insurmountable issue over my life, and I just don't know what to do. And she said, despite logic, she got involved and she did something, and she sowed a seed. She gave into freedom for our future, and God began to show her the path of her life, and God began to show her some things in her life. And so I've had you turn to Mark, the fourth chapter. In Mark, the fourth chapter... Jesus tells a story about the principle or the parable of the sower, but also he tells a couple of other parables, and today I want to take you to Mark, the fourth chapter, and we're going to read one of Jesus' parables and look at this principle of multiplication and look at the miracle in or of multiplication. Because truly, when, it, when God's hands on it, it's a miracle. In verse number 26, this is where we're going to look today. Mark, the fourth chapter, it says this. It says in Jesus, and he said, The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night and rise by day. The seed should sprout and should grow, and he himself does not know how. For the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, then after that the full grain in the head. But when the grain ripens, immediately he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. And so here Jesus gives us this parable, and he doesn't explain this parable, but we see exactly what's going on. We see here the principle of multiplication for our lives. Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is like a man who took seed and he put it into the ground. He planted seed into the ground. And then he goes on and he tells his parable, and he says the farmer, he went and he did what farmers do, right? He goes to bed, and he wakes up, and then he goes to bed, and he wakes up, and he goes to bed, and he wakes up, and he goes to bed. And the season goes on, and then all of a sudden, something begins to happen. What happens? The seed that he planted into the ground begins to sprout out of the ground, right? And then the seed sprouts, the, the, the sprout comes, and then it grows a stalk, and then it grows an ear, and then it grows a full grain on the inside of that. And you see, Jesus is saying the kingdom of heaven is like this story. And that the principle of multiplication is exactly right here in this story. And this applies to all areas of your life, your children, your finances, your relationships, your husbands, your wives, your grandchildren, your jobs, whatever it might be, this principle of multiplication applies to you and I. The principle of multiplication here, Jesus says that the farmer, he sows into the ground and the, the ground, the earth produces and he does not know how. He reveals here the principle of multiplication. It's very simple. You want to know what the principle of multiplication is? Do you? I don't believe you. The principle of multiplication is simple. It's this. You sow, and God brings the increase. That's the principle of multiplication. You're like, that was it? That was, that was, you had me on the edge of my seat for that? Really? That's it. The principle of multiplication is you sow the seed, God brings the increase. Think about it for a moment. Multiplication in your relationship. Maybe your, your, your husband or your wife, or you're arguing, you're not, you're not getting along lately, right? And you're starting to look around, man, I, maybe I married the wrong woman, or maybe I married the wrong guy. Husbands, right now, you just look forward, don't even look, just, just, it's all right. You see, the principle of multiplication, you plant the seed. You plant the seed into your relationship, and God brings the increase. The principle of multiplication, the Bible tells us about our children, right? Train up your child in the way that they should go, and they'll not depart from it, right? You plant the seed, but you can't control, you can't dictate, you can't lead your child any further. When they make a choice, they're going to make the choice on their own. You plant the seed, God brings the increase. The principle of multiplication in your finance, in your business, you plant the seed, God brings the increase. You could work hard, but with God's favor, you could work smart and be blessed. And so here we see the principle of multiplication for our lives. In all aspects of our lives, it is our duty, it is our job to plant the seed. It is God's responsibility to bring increase to that seed. The farmer, he plants the seed and then he goes to bed and then he wakes up and then he goes to bed and then he wakes up and then he goes to bed and then he wakes up and then he goes to bed and then he wakes up and then season grows. But then all of a sudden increase comes. And you see what happens, and we need to understand about multiplication, and what we need to understand about sowing is that sowing is strategic. 
I mean, think about it. Jesus uses the illustration of a farmer and his seeds. What does a farmer do? He sows his seeds. Why does he sow his seed? It's not hard. For a harvest. You're like, Pastor, look, I don't want to answer. You're going to, I don't want to be wrong. The farmer sows his seed. Why? To gain a harvest. It's a strategic, right? The farmer is not like spontaneously being generous to the earth. You know, like I thought I would just, you know, be, be good and grab a handful of seeds and put them in the earth to, to be a good person. No, I put the seeds in the ground and I watered the ground. Why? So the seeds would grow a harvest for my life. So that Jesus says immediately when the harvest came, what did the farmer do? He got the sickle. He reaped from the harvest. Now, here's where we say, well, we don't give to get, right? Because what we have a tendency to do in the principle of multiplication is we add our flesh to the, com- to, the, to the principle and we say, well, I don't give because I don't want to give back. I'm going to give into the offering because I want money back. But we learned this a couple of weeks ago. That if, if money is our master, if mammon is our master, God will not be our slave to get us more money, right? But if God is the source of our provision, right, money will be our resource and God will use money to build his kingdom for his glory. And you know, so you see, we plant a seed, you sow a seed strategically. When you don't feel like sowing into your marriage, that's when you plant a seed. When you don't think you should sow into your children any longer, that's when you plant a seed. You say, my kids are gone and out of the house. Now you've got grandbabies. You start planting the seed. It's strategic. It's for a reason. What is the reason? To gain a harvest for God's glory. Sowing is strategic. And today... As we give into this miracle offering, it's a seed. We are sowing. We are saying, you know what? I'm taking what I have and I'm putting it into the ground. I'm putting it into the kingdom of God. And God, I expect a return, but not a return of my wants and my wishes and my desires and all. And my and I got a shopping list, God. No, I expect a return in your kingdom for your kingdom to benefit from the seed that I plant today. But you know what the beautiful thing is about God's kingdom benefiting from our seed? We benefit too. He's going to share the love, praise God. So the principle of multiplication is this, simply that you sow and God brings the increase. Sowing is strategic. As a matter of fact, you can't talk about multiplication without talking about the story of Jesus feeding the the multitude, right? The stories of the fish and the loaves In, in Matthew, the 14th chapter. There they are. You've heard the story before. Maybe if you haven't, we'll talk about it. Matthew, the 14th chapter, says Jesus is out there and he's preaching to a crowd of 5,000 men. And that's not including women and children. So let's just estimate somewhere between 10 and 12,000 people, right? So here's a crowd of 10, 12, some people say 20,000 people, whatever. A lot of people. And so the disciples come to Jesus and say, Jesus, it's getting late in the day. The people are tired. The people are weary. Send them away that they might go into the towns and the villages and they might buy food and they might eat and rest. And Jesus looks at the crowd and he sees the crowd and he says to his disciples, you give them something to eat. Now think about that for a moment. I love a John, John's account of the story. John tells Jesus, says to Philip, Philip, how much money do you have to buy food? And Philip's like, we, Jesus, um, we, we don't have anything. Like, there's no way we could buy it. Matthew, Jesus says to his disciples, you give them something to eat. I mean, imagine being in that position, right? Jesus has just challenged you to feed 10,000, 12,000 people. It takes a small army to do that as it is. And now he's got 12 guys. See, I can just imagine, they they all get together and they're in like a football huddle, right? And they're like, okay, okay, what do you got? Peter's like, what do you got, Andrew? And Andrew's like, man, I already ate it. And he's like, all right, all right. Philip, what do you got? He's like, dude, I had breakfast this morning. That's all I had. Okay, all right, all right. John, what do you, John's like, I'm spiritual. I'm fasting today. I wasn't planning on eating today, (laughs) right? And then, and then the little boy walks by and he's got his lunch bag, he's like KFC, right? And he's, you know, like Long John Silvers and some KFC. And, 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 and he opens up and the top is like, get him, right? So they get the boy's lunch and his fish. Now, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm taking a little bit of creative freedom in the story. All right, I admit that. And so they're like, okay, okay, we've got, we've got some loaves of bread and a couple of fish. That's a start. Now we, we need to get like 15,000 more of this. Anybody else got loaves and fish, right? And it's like the, the, the crowd goes silent. And then they go to Jesus and they say, Jesus, we don't have anything. All we've got is loaves and fish. Jesus, it's just not enough. It's not going to make a difference. There's this mountain of feeding these people that we can't overcome. There's just no way around it. And Jesus says these words. He says to his disciples, bring it to me. Bring it to me. You see, Jesus was challenging his disciples. He said, get a seed. Find a seed in your life. 
They said, Jesus, the seed in our life in proportion to the need, it is, it's never enough. I mean, think about it. Think about the size of a seed compared to acres and acres of farmland that produce a harvest. So Jesus says, it doesn't matter about the size of your seed. It's just a couple of pieces of bread and a couple of dried or, or a broiled fish. Bring them to me. You see, we sow, God brings the increase. And Jesus was challenging his disciples this principle, saying, you've got a seed. It seems worthless. It seems useless. It seems like it's not going to do anything in your life. Just like the widow with her two mites, when she dropped in her two pennies into the offering, Jesus said, she gave more than everybody else. Why? Because she had a seed to sow. You see, we sow, and it's God who brings the increase. And as we know the story, Jesus took the bread and he broke it and he passed it out and there was plenty enough and they gathered bushels and bushels and baskets of extras. Why? Because it's our job to sow the seed. It's God's job to bring increase to that seed. That's the principle of multiplication to our lives. But you see, you'll never see multiplication if you don't sow. If you don't sow into your marriage, it's never going to get better. If you don't sow into your relationships, they're never going to improve. If you don't sow into your children, they're going to find their own way in life. If you don't sow into your grandkids, they're going to look to somebody else for wisdom. Multiplication will never come if you don't sow. So we have to sow. You have to sow. But what stops us from sowing? Well, what happens is we start to focus on the growth aspect of sowing, right? I mean, Pastor Luke, you don't understand. I've given before. I've sown before. I, I told my wife these things before. I, I, I went to work one day knowing that I was going to be a different guy today. And, and you know what? I got burned. I got mocked. I got scorned. I got, I got haggled about it. I, I gave in that church. They, they didn't do anything with it or they misused it. And, and I'm just tired and I'm tired of being abused and I'm tired of, and, I, and I just don't want to sow and I don't see any results. And so we let fear begin to come into our lives, and fear begins to hinder our seed. You see, Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is like a man who scatters seed, and then he goes to bed, and then he wakes up. You see, there's a season where the farmer has no control over that seed. He can't do anything about it. All he can do is what he's supposed to do, and that's all he can do. Everything is happening out of his sight. And you see, we sow a seed. And we go to bed and we wake up and we go to bed and we wake up and we go to bed and we wake up and we go to bed and we wake up and we say, is the seed there? No, I don't see anything yet. And fear begins to creep in. Doubt begins to creep in. Instead of feeding ourselves faith, we begin to feed ourselves doubt and worry and anxiety. As a matter of fact, there's a story, another parable. Jesus says that there was a master and he gave his servants. He had three servants and he gave them talents according to their abilities. He gave to one five talents. He gave to one two talents. And he gave to another one one talent. So the master goes and he gives him their talents. And some, some scholars say that a talent might have been somewhere like 70 pounds of gold. I mean, that's a lot of resources. Whatever a talent is to you, whatever. And so the master goes, and then he comes back after a journey, and he comes back, and the one with five talents says to, says to his master, he says, look, you see, I, I've sowed, I've, I've invested, I've, I've multiplied, and now I have five additional talents. Here you are. And he says, man, well done, good and faithful servant. The two comes, and he says, well, look, master, likewise, I saw him do it, and I sowed, and I, and I gave what you gave me, and I put it into, and I invested in it, and look, and I've, I've got two more back, and here's four instead of two. And then he comes to the, to the servant with one talent. And the servant with one talent says to his master, he says, Master, I knew you to be a hard man. I knew you to be a man who reaped where you did not sow, who gathered where you did not scatter seed. And so he says, I, I was afraid of losing that talent, so I buried it in the ground. You see, sowing is strategic. God has given you a seed to sow. The Bible says that God is the one who gives bread to the eater and seed to the sower. God has given you a seed. God has given you a talent. God has given you something. He's given you a seed to sow into your relationship. He's given you a seed to sow into your children. He's given you a seed to sow into your job or to your business. He's given you a seed to sow into your church. You say, Pastor Luke, it doesn't seem like it's anything. Just like the fish and loaves are nothing. It's not about that. It's your job to sow. It's God's job to grow. And so the principle of multiplication is simply that. But then what happens is our faith begins to wander and our faith begins to waver. You see, your faith will make or break your multiplication or your increase. It's all about faith. The Bible says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. You see, there are many people who have faith to get an increase or to get a return from what they sow into the kingdom of God. 
But as time begins to progress, that faith, faith begins to wane. As a matter of fact, a, a couple of weeks ago, my mother-in-law gave my, my boy Bjorn and my girl Emma a little potting plant. She wanted to teach them how to grow plants. And so she got him, Bjorn got his Spider-Man one. And it was a little wafer of dirt and a bag of seeds. And they had instructions, put some water in there, and the dirt will expand like a sponge. And put the seeds into the dirt and then put it into sunlight. Like really easy instructions, right? Like not hard. So what do we do? We put the water in the dirt, we, we put the seeds into the dirt, and then we water again, you know, we, we put it, and then we have a kitchen window, we put it right there in our kitchen window where the light shines. What happens the next day, Bjorn wakes up, Mom, Dad, did my plants grow? We're like, come on, let's go look. No, they didn't grow yet. He's like, something's wrong. So what do we do? We're like, okay, well, maybe it needs more water. So we take it over to the sink and we pour water. We're like, oh, no, we filled it too high. So we drowned it out. So then we, we take it and we, like, dump it out, right? And we're like, okay, all right. You know, and the seeds are all floating. So we push the seeds back down. And then we put it back in the window. And then the next day, Bjorn wakes up. Mom, Dad, did my seeds grow? Let's go look. So we go over there. We're like, no, nothing yet. And he's like, something's wrong. Okay, you're right, you're right. You know what? We probably drained too much water after we overfilled it with too much water. So let's fill it up again. Oh, no, we filled it up with water too much again. Let's drain it out again. And the seeds are floating. We're like trying to pick them out and put them back in the water. It goes on and it goes on and it goes on and it goes on for three weeks. With Emma's, we learned the lesson. Emma is, is, is there in the kitchen plant with like some green in it, but not a lot. But then there's Bjorn's. And after a while, nothing comes from it. Why? Because we got so wrapped up in the growth part of it. We got so wrapped up in the part that we didn't have control over. We try to make it happen, and that's what we do. We say, God, I'm going to sow a seed into my marriage, and I'm going to make it grow. <laughs> no, it didn't grow. God, I'm going to give into the church offering, and, and, I, and my bills are going to be paid tomorrow. <laughs> you see, you don't have control over that aspect. That's God. Your job is to sow the seed. It's God's job to bring growth and increase to that seed at God's season. The farmer, he gets up and he goes to bed and he gets up and he goes to bed and he gets up and he goes to bed and he gets up and he goes to bed and there's no change in the field and he gets up and he goes to bed and he gets up and he goes to bed and nothing happens and then all of a sudden something begins to change. Why? The principle of multiplication. Simply put, you sow the seed, let God bring the increase. Your faith will make or break your results. Many people have faith for an increase. The Bible says in one of the parables, the parable of the sower, that the seed that remained gathered increase, some 30, 60, and 100 fold. Many people have faith to receive that, but as the time begins to, to draw out, that faith begins to wane. And James says it like this in James, the first chapter. He says, if anybody lacks of wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach. But he says, let that man ask without doubt. Why? For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven to and fro and tossed by the wind. He says, let not that man suppose he receives anything from God. Why? Because he is a double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. And so we get so wrapped up on, why isn't it growing? And God says, all you need to do is have faith in me that it will. And that's the principle of multiplication. So what do we do with our lives? What do we do with our gifts? What do we do with our seeds? Simply put, it's so easy. It's just as easy as a principle of multiplication. The principle of multiplication is you sow, let God grow. What do you do today? Sow the seed. Water your faith. I'll add that one, okay? And then let God bring the increase. Sow the seed. Water your faith. You see, if you're not feeding your faith, you're starving your faith. And if you're not feeding your faith with, well, you know what, God's faithful, God is good, you know, despite the fact, like Mary's story, despite the fact that it didn't seem like anything was possible, I'm going to trust that God, with Him, all things are possible. And there's a mountain in my life that I need to get out of my way, and I'm going to start watering my faith, and I'm going to start speaking to that mountain. And I'm going to wake up in the morning, and that mountain's still going to be there. And then I'm going to wake up the next morning, and that mountain's still going to be there. And I'm going to wake up the next morning, and that mountain's still going to be there. And I'm going to wake up the next morning, and that mountain's still going to be there. But I'm going to feed my faith. And God says that that mountain's going to move. And I sowed the seed. I started to plant it in the water. It's not my job to move the mountain. It's my job to believe in God to move the mountain. See, Paul says it like this in another illustration. He says, listen, guys, everybody's wrapped up on who, you, who are you a follower of? We like to do that today. Like, man, and so-and-so is my pastor, and I follow so-and-so, and this is my movement now. Paul says, look, man, I planted the seed. The guy named Apollos came by and watered it, but it doesn't matter. Why? Because it's God who gave the increase. And he comes back in the next verse and he says, what does it matter who planted and watered? That's man's job. We're focusing too much on what men are doing and we need to start focusing on what God is doing and that is bringing growth at the season of my time. 
And that's why faith is so imperative. It's so important for us, church, to realize and recognize there are mountains in our lives that must move in order for us to do and to be who God has called us to be. And it's going to take faith in God to sow the seed when the mountain doesn't seem like it's moving, to sow the seed and trust that God is the one who brings the miracle in his multiplication to our lives. There's a story of a family here, the Ventura family, and they, had a, they have a great story about this. Check it out. When it seems like there's no hope, look at this story. I came to the United States when I was about a year old. Um, that didn't mean much until I graduated high school in 2012. Um, as an undocumented student, I cannot apply for FAFSA, which is federal financial aid, or any loans from any government or any bank. So in 2013, Freedom for Our Future uh, started. My family and I decided to partake in that. Um, got, we decided on an amount and split it amongst the four of us. The Lord provided for my dad job after job, and it was a total of 40 months of payments that we had to do um, for four years, 10 months every year. Um, and God has just been so good, and um, we just continue to trust in Him and know that He's going to provide. April of last this last month, um, I graduated with my bachelor's degree, and it's all because of God's goodness and the faithfulness of the Lord that I stand here and saying that I received my bachelor's degree um, completely debt-free. So we're so grateful. It's hopeless. There's no, there's no hope without Jesus, but you start sowing the seed. You start sowing the seed in your marriage. You start sowing the seed to your children and to your grandchildren. You start sowing the seed into your church for the kingdom of God and His glory. And all of a sudden, God says, I'm going to see that seed. I'm going to acknowledge it. You start watering your faith, and God says, when it's time, when it's season for that seed to start breaking out of the ground, you're going to see something. And guess what? One seed doesn't produce one seed. You can count the numbers of seed in an apple, but you cannot count the numbers of apples in a seed. Why? Because a multiplication brings a miracle to your life. And that's why Paul says in Galatians, the sixth chapter, he's talking to the church, he says, church, therefore let us not grow weary, or excuse me, do not be deceived. Why? God is not mocked. You can't fool him. He can't pull the wool over his eyes. God, I sowed. And he's like, no, you did it. God is not mocked. For what a man sows, that we he will also reap. That is a law, a principle. Just like gravity says, what goes up must come down. There is a law spiritually that says, what you sow, you will reap. And look what Paul says to the church. He says, you want to sow stuff according to the flesh? Guess what you're going to get back? Stuff according to the flesh. But he who sows to the Spirit of God will reap from the Spirit everlasting life. God wants you to be blessed. And then he tells his church, therefore, let us not grow weary while doing good. The farmer sows the seed, and then he goes to bed, and then he wakes up, and then he goes to bed, and then he wakes up, and then he goes to bed, and then he wakes up, and then he goes to bed, and then he wakes up, and then he goes to bed, and then he wakes up, and then he goes to bed, and then he wakes up, and then he goes to bed, and the season progresses and goes and goes and goes, and nothing seems to happen, but let us not grow weary for doing, for doing good. Why? For in due season you will reap if you do not lose heart. The biggest little word in the Bible, if. We like to skip over if. It's, just, it's small. It's insignificant. Just like a seed is insignificant before it's harvested. If you do not lose heart. You see, your faith is going to make or break your return. Your faith in your marriage, your faith in your children, your faith in your finances, your faith in the church, your faith in the seed of freedom for our future, your faith in God is going to make or break the increase of your return. God wants to have some things for you in your life. God wants to see you blessed. And that's why Jesus says these words in Mark, the 11th chapter. Mark, the 11th chapter, verse number 23. Looking at the mountains of our lives. Jesus says these things. For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes the things that he says, he shall say whatever he, he shall have whatever he says. Verse number 24. Therefore, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Church, don't get so wrapped up on the growth process. Listen, I heard one preacher tell us one time, not every seed germinates at the same pace. 
There are crops that take years and years and years to germinate, and there are crops that only take weeks. Don't look to the left or don't look to the right. Look to God. You sow the seed. You water your faith. He who believes the things that he says, the Bible says, he shall have them. And you trust that God is the one that brings the increase. In just a moment, we're going to receive our final offering for freedom for our future. Now, we're going to have the opportunities. Of course, people are asking at the door, like, Pastor Luke, I wasn't able to bring it today. Can I bring it? Of course, we're not going to say no. Are you kidding me? <laughs> but today is our miracle offering. If, if, you, that, if that's you, if you prepare to gift, there's envelopes in the seats in front of you. There's yellow envelopes. If there's not yellow envelopes, just use a white envelope. It doesn't matter. It's an envelope. Put the money in there. Put the check in there. If you want to give online by credit card or by uh, ATM or debit, you can use the kiosks. Also, there's, uh, you can text to give if you'd like to do that. Just make sure when you text, you add the keyword F-F-O-F. What does that mean? Freedom for our future, F-F-O-F. That will go to your Freedom for Our Future account. We're going to receive that offering in just a moment. But before we do, I just want to take a look back at the miracle of God's multiplication, and just where this journey took us and where this journey has brought us and where we're going in the future. So, draw, check your attention to this video.